Hey everyone, today I want to talk about the Team UI Brick, but instead of doing a regular review, I will show you the different firmware options available, how to install them, what Port Master and Pico 8 are, and how to restore the device to factory settings. This can be super helpful if you buy it without a micro SD card, like I did, or if you want to return it to the stock settings. This is my first handheld, and I have spent a couple of weeks with it. Since it arrived, I have hardly put it down, so I will share some important details if you are thinking about getting one. My first impression was that it might be a bit small, and I thought I would prefer a larger size. But after using it more specifically for one-handed games like Pokemon, I found that the size is perfect for me. I mainly use it during downtime or while traveling, playing mostly Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance games. If you are planning to use it for more demanding games or console, you might want something larger with analog sticks. Now let's dive into the different operating system or firmware options available for this handheld. I will briefly show each firmware highlighting its pros and cons and later I will guide you on how to install them, share basic usage tips, shortcuts and some key combinations that I think they are very useful. So let's start with the stock firmware. This is what it comes with the micro SD card in case you buy it with one. In my case, I didn't, but I installed it anyway, just to see how is the stock firmware. And if this is your first handheld, I recommend you using it to get familiar with the system. I bought mine without the micro SD card, so the first thing I did was install this. It's straightforward, you have to add your games and you can browse them by categories. While I'm not a fan of the available customization themes, it does the job with basic functionalities and the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and everything is working fine. After this, we have stock mix, basically is the stock firmware with some added enhancement. After getting used to the original firmware, I suggest trying this one. It's the firmware that I have used the most because it's very easy to navigate and I like the purple theme that comes with it. And like with the original firmware, everything is working fine. The only thing that I found is the start and select buttons are changed with the functions button, but you can use the device without any problem. Now let's talk about custom firmwares. We have Nuli, Min UI, and crossmix and if you know any other custom firmware please leave it in the comments below and i will check it if you are enjoying this video please consider subscribe starting with nuli as of january 2025 is in a pre-alpha stage meaning that it works but has some bugs i have tried and while it generally runs well there are occasional issues like not shutting down or entering standby mode since this firmware is a fork of patosera it features the emulation station frontend allowing for plenty of customization with themes and game at work so i'm excited to see the stable release but i'm holding on for now due to the stability concerns min ui is another interesting firmware beloved by the community it's very simple focusing on playing games without unnecessary extras for a handheld like the team ui brick is perfect for quick gaming sessions without the distractions of massive libraries and finally we have crossmix right now the version 1.4 is currently in development for the team ui brick but you can try the version 1.3 originally designed for the TMI Smart Pro. I installed this version but there were graphical glitches making it less ideal for the daily use. So I'm waiting for the version 1.4 to see the improvements. Now I would quickly show how to install each firmware. All you need is a micro SD card at least 16 or 32 GB but I have had less problems with micro SD cards from 64 or 128 GB and you will need to format them on PC using FAT32. So let's go with the installation process. These are the four fingers that I will show you how to install very quickly. But if you want a more in-depth review, I recommend you checking Retro Game Corps. This guy is awesome. I highly recommend checking their channel. Probably you already know him. And he has guides for the menu I set up. He is running. He has guides for Nuli. He has guides for a lot of different things. So, so I recommend you checking Rust channel. But let's start with the stock operating system. We are going to go to this link. I will leave the link in the description of the video. And we are going to download this zip file. So just click on it and wait until the file is downloaded. In case you want to download a stock mix, you need to download first the stock operating system, then go to this link. And here we are going to download this one. Click on the zip file and here click on the download icon. Again, we just need to wait until the file is downloaded. In case we want MinUI, we are going to the GitHub page, go down and download these two files the base and the extras. And if we want Nuli, we are going to this web page. Here we go down and we will see that the brick is in a pre-alpha state, but we can download the image, this one. Once we have downloaded the file, we are going, for example, to install the stock firmware. Just unzip the file. As I'm on Linux, I will do 
it with the terminal, but you can just right click and extract the file. Once we have extracted everything, we can delete the zip file. And now we need to insert the microSD card. This is the microSD card in my case, so I'm going to format it. For that, I'm going to use the Raspberry Pi Imager. You can find this program for Linux, Mac and Windows. And we are going to click on Choose OS, Format Card as FAT32. And here we need to select the microSD card that we have installed. In my case, a 256 gigabytes microSD card. Just click here on yes, put the password in case you are prompted and wait. Once it finished, we can see that now we have the microSD card empty. So we just need to copy the files. So select everything, copy and paste here. You have to wait a little bit. And after that, you are ready to insert the microSD card into the trim UI brick and start the console. It will take a few seconds to boot and this is the default menu. If you go to this menu in function key settings, you can modify the functions of the different buttons. For example, we can put this button to modify the screen brightness, this one to turn on or off the LEDs and the slider in the right part to mute, for example, the console. And as you can see, now the function keys are programmed to our taste, so we can switch the brightness, turn on or off the lights, or mute the console as we want. Let's continue now with stock mix. Again, we're going to unzip the file. Once the process is finished, you can delete the zip file. So just delete it. And now we're going to copy all the folders and paste them again in the SD card, but without deleting anything. Let's paste them. In case you are prompted, let's click on Merge Everything and wait until everything is copied. When everything finishes, you can now plug the SD card into the system. In case you have something like this, you can replace. And when everything finishes, you can just plug the micro SD card into the handheld. And this is how I have been using my rig most of the time. We have some more apps than the stock firmware, but it is mostly the same. And as you can see, the start and select buttons are switched with the function keys. So to turn on or off the LEDs, I need to press the start button instead of the function 2 key. And the same happens to the screen brightness shortcut that I set up earlier. And as a tip, we can go to the settings, themes, and select a different theme. I prefer these themes rather than the ones that comes with the stone firmware, so check them out. Let's move now to Min UI. In this case, I'm installing Min UI in the same microSD card as I did the rest. So the first thing is we are going to delete everything and we're going to format the microSD card into FAT32. So again, let's use Raspberry Pi Imager, choose OS and choose Erase. And here we're going to select the storage, the micro SD card. And once we have finished, we have again the micro SD card empty. So let's go to our mini UI folder and let's unzip both files. And here we can delete the two files that we have downloaded, but do not delete this one. And we can delete also the readme. So let's delete this for now. And we only need to copy the BIOS, EMUS, ROMs, Saves, Tools, Trim UI and these two files into the micro SD card. So let's copy everything and let's paste this. As you see, we have not copied the folders related to different handhelds. We only need the one for Trim UI. It will take a few minutes to boot and you will see that we only have a few options. This is one of the best things of MinUI, it's very simple and you just need to focus on play games. And to finish, let's install Nuli. This one is going to be a bit different because we don't need to copy and paste the files into the micro SD card. We need to flash the micro SD card. So again, the first thing is format the micro SD card. Let's click on choose, erase, let's select the micro SD card and yes. Now that we have formatted the micro SD card, we need to get this file. This is very important. We don't need the .gz. We need the .img. So we need to uncompress this. So in Windows or Mac, you can right click and uncompress. I will do it with a program called PiaZip. Once we have uncompressed the file, we will see the .img file. This is the one that we are going to flash. So again, we are going to use Raspberry Pi Imager. So let's open the program. Let's click again in Choose OS. And instead of Erase, we are going to select Use Custom. Now navigate to the img file and select here the micro SD card. Here, click on No and Yes. You will see here the progress bar. So you need to wait until this finish and you will get a message telling you that you can now unplug the micro SD card from your computer. Now, when it's finished, we can unplug the micro SD card and insert it into the brick. 
This is how an only works with the emulation station frontend and if we want to modify the RGB settings we need to go to this tool and switch the mode to off so we can turn off the RGB LEDs. If we want to modify the brightness of the screen we can press the function button and the volume up and volume down. Another tip is going to the menu and going to sound settings and here you can disable the frontend music. With that you won't hear any more the different songs in the menu. Also another important thing from Nuli is that the micro SD card is split between two different partitions. The first one is called Batosfera and you can see this in operating system like Windows but the more important one is Share. This one is where we have to place the ROMs but you are not going to be able to see these partitions in Windows and I'm not sure about Mac. I'm using Linux, this is a mini computer like the Raspberry Pi, so I'm able to mount the partition and I can copy and paste the ROMs directly here. But if not, you will need to connect to Nuli through SSH and paste them manually. And to finish, let's install Crossmix. We are going to the official GitHub and we are going down until we see the link. Here you can select the zip file, click on it and download it. Once we have downloaded it, we are going to unzip the file. Once we have uncompressed the file, we can delete the zip file, so just click on delete. And I'm coming from Nuli, so I'm going to format again the micro SD card, as we saw before, using Raspberry Pi Imager. And now I'm going to copy everything, so let's select all, copy and paste here. As you can see, Crossmix waits a lot, so it will take a few minutes. If you are new to retro emulation, you might not be familiar with Pico8 and Portmaster. These are exciting topics I recently explored and I want to talk a bit about them. Pico8 is a virtual console that mimics a 16-bit retro console. The community has embraced it, creating many small fantastic games that you can play. Pico8 costs about 15 euros, but the games are free. I recommend watching this next video for installation. This is from Retro Game Course. This is one of the best channels in case you are into emulation. For top-rated Pico8 games, I will leave a link in the description with this top list and you will find gems like a simple version of Celeste or a Terraria-like game. For Master, on the other hand, allows you to port around 900 games to your device. For most games, you will need the original files from platforms like Steam and these games include Balatro, Stardew Valley or the original Celeste game. Check out the next video for more details on the process. To wrap up, let's touch on ROMs, BIOS and hard ROMs. While I can share the links due to YouTube policies, you can find them really easily on Reddit, Discord or Telegram. It's easy and safer that way. And about hard ROMs, hack ROMs are modified or custom built versions of games like Pokemon. They are free to download. As selling them will be illegal and I have been playing them a lot recently. The last one I played is Pokemon Hoenn Adventure which has really beautiful art so I recommend you checking it. Pokemon Esmeralda Legacy is another popular hack run worth checking out. So in case you are interested I will leave a couple of links in the description with pages where you can download for free these hack runs. I hope this video helps you decide if the Team UI brick is for you how to use it and introduce you to some new games like the hack ROMs. Leave a comment if you would like to watch more videos like this one or wants me to dive deeper into any topic.